What up, T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Season 12, Episode 14. This week was the mid-season finale episode. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta will be back early 2025, and I'm looking forward to it. This was a really good mid-season finale, so let's get right into it. So the episode kicks off with Sierra meeting up with Spice so they can have their one-on-one conversation about the diss track that Amy did um, against Sierra and the BAM. So you all know what time it is. It is time for Keisha's Theater, Sierra edition. So wait, that's how you gonna do me? No head, no nothing. Yeah, because you know how you did me the other night. And I don't appreciate that at all. You don't appreciate it? No, I don't. Well, I don't appreciate it either. I'm not feeling spice right now because she invited me to her listening party just so she could allow Amy to perform live dissing me you let that lame do a diss record towards me on your album where they do that that spice i thought we were like sisters no 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 bumba clot no you're not going to do that to me no you won't sierra no spice that was totally wrong and you don't have me on there right After the way Amy acted at my engagement party, I'm done with her. Like, for real, for real. I am done. What I need to do is get on that cast album because what's not going to happen is Amy thinking she going to do a diss track against me, Sierra D, and me not get on a track and diss her ass right back baby let me tell you something it'll be a cold day in hell before i ever let her get one up on me sierra g sierra bumper clot i don't have you on this period i sent you the beat that's the same thing i was screaming at you in the streets now one time did you think She's saying this about you. Sierra, you asking me to be messy. I could not be messy. I could not tell you what Amy was saying on the song. It would feel like I was going against my own album. That's not how the music business goes. You know that. All I know is I did my song and that's all that matters. Well, I'm ready to hear it. Bring it out. And I'm ready for you to hear it because enough is a f- enough. Period. Period. You know I don't play all day. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It sounds good. But you did a whole diss track against Amy. Oh, yes, I did because I like to try it, okay? Amy, you in my city. And I need you to put a little bit more respect on my name. Because I don't play no games. And you are lame and seen. I will say I did feel like Spice was not taking accountability for the fact that she was being messy. This is your project, okay? You have every right to give a direction on what you want this to sound like, what you want to be said. And obviously you want this to be a a diss 
record with the cast going at each other. There's nothing peaceful or or harmony about this. It's just mess, okay? Mess. So all of that, I can't tell her what to say on her song, and I can't tell you neither. It's a bunch of crap, okay? And, but you can't trust nobody that like to walk around dressed like an oversized Smurfette. Like, girl, no, 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 no. Then we go to Rashida and Kirk, and she didn't let that man back in the house, and they discuss Jasmine, and he says um, that he deleted her text messages because of her energy. She be on some negative energy, and he just don't want to see it. And Rashida eats it up, child, because she want to believe anything that this man say so she can stay with him. And in her confessional, she talking about you know, you just don't leave a 20 plus year relationship after thinking things through and all of the time y'all done spent together and all the things y'all done been through talking about, um, ask Barack and Michelle, ask Beyonce and Jay-Z. Like, first of all, leave them out of it. Okay. Leave them out of you and your mess okay we're never saying that couples don't go through things in a marriage you know what i'm saying you decided to forgive him quote unquote when he cheated on you and got another woman pregnant okay you decided to work things out and stay and no judgment there if you like it i love it but it's the fact that years later he's still planning your face with the same woman that he cheated on you with and had a baby on you with that's why we all call you stupid if this is quote unquote true. So girl, you don't need to give all of these excuses and speeches about why you stay and just say, that's my husband. I love him. And I'm gonna stick beside him. Cause that's obviously what you're going to do. So please leave us out of it, please. So it's the day of the concert child. And Bambi acts chaotic about, what's going on with him and Scrappy because at this point they had officially fallen out over the YouTube situation and he's explaining everything that was going on and how Scrappy don't be about his business this that and the third so everybody is going to perform their song to the same beat and I was like so this album is going to be everybody doing a song on the same beat Okay, everybody going to perform, including Shekinah, which I found to be hilarious, okay? Ashley greets Zayn before the show. And is it just me or their whole vibe, situation, marriage, relationship is so weird. Why does she greet him like she don't know him? <laughs> She be, hi, how you doing? Yeah, you look nice. It's like, don't y'all live in the same house? Ain't this your husband? Didn't you wake up to this man? Are y'all together? What is this going on between y'all? It's so weird. So she goes on to tell him that her son that she had from a previous relationship is going to go stay with his dad for the summer. And Zane is pissed off because her and the baby daddy made this decision and didn't even include him or consult him or whatever. And he get tight about it. And she was like, uh-uh, you need to calm down because just like you just finding out stuff last minute, it was the same when I found out about the stuff with you and your baby mama. So it was obvious at that point that she was doing this to be spiteful and to be petty. But it's like in the bigger scheme of things, if I was Zane, I wouldn't care. It ain't my child. He going to spend the summer with his daddy. Ooh, we okay. <laughs> like, how is that hurting me? Like, what? Their whole situation is just dumb. Like, get Ashley off the show. I don't even mind Zane being on the show for real, for real. But y'all just need to get a divorce and leave each other alone because y'all are weird, okay? But Zane look like uh 17... 60 year old <laughs> all at the same time like how you look like you in junior high and in a nursing home all at once like he did not age well mm -mm, mm -mm. It, it's it's given it's given 
I don't even know what it's giving. It's, mm, no, I don't know. It's giving like he drink Coke 45 all day, every day. He look like he has drank a lot in his life and it's wearing on his skin. Yeah. Yandy surprises Mandisi's backstage with the jeweler who comes with watches and rings and basically, this was her way of being like, you know, I need for you to get your ring back on your finger. So, he picks out a ring that he likes. And at this point, he's going to start wearing his ring again. But he says something that stuck out to me in his confessional. He said that he's going to wear it just to make her happy. And see, that would piss me off. Because don't wear it because it's going to make me happy. Wear it because you want to. Wear it because you're my husband. And we're in a marriage, sir. That was weird to me. It was it was a weird statement. I don't know what's going on between them two. Um, I do watch Lil Mandisi's YouTube channel. They seem like they're all right when they're on there together. So, I mean, but that's just a little glimpse of somebody's life. So you never know. I want them to work out. So then Richie D pops up. Ain't seen him on our television screen in quite some time. I actually missed him once I saw him. And I was like, I would like to see Richie on Atlanta well he pops up at the show and he speaks to Yandy and Mandisi's and Shekinah and they was like who you here with and he was like I'm here with Jasmine and Erica and so they looking like oh really and Shekinah was like why are you here with that girl why are you here with that lady uh-uh absolutely not and he looking like what I do he was like I came with them I don't know what is happening so Rashida and Kirk are backstage with Erica the rapper, and in walks Jasmine with her friend Erica. It's hella awkward. I don't even think they spoke to each other. Rashida immediately gets up and leaves as he has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jasmine about canon. And I would think after everything that y'all just went through with you not being present for certain conversations that you would want to be present moving forward when it has to do with anything pertaining these two people why would you get up and leave that's why it's just like none about nothing about this makes sense nothing about this seems real because ain't no way a woman that cheated with my husband and birthed of a child out of this would be able to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him after she just told me that he recently was still trying to f*** on her. What? Girl, bye. Here go Kirk grinning and skimming all up in Jasmine's face. Baby, when he get his one-on-one -on -one time with her, he just be... Like a little kid in the candy store. He don't smile that big around nobody but her have y'all ever paid attention to that we don't never see kirk teeth unless he around jasmine anytime he around rashida it's always this <sighs> he always rubbing that head and sign and acting like he's stressed out like he about to be in cardiac arrest or something but when he get around jasmine child you see all 32 he just be so happy and girl, if this ain't um a real storyline, I still will be feeling some type of way because uh why you grinning all up in this lady face? Like, do you wanna fuck her? Like what's going on? Like either way, I'm gonna have a problem with whatever is going on here. Okay? Because he get real happy when he around her, and that says a lot. He admits in that conversation that he lied on her about her coming to the door naked. And I'm like, what this this is why Rashida should have been sitting there because he just admitted that he lied on her. But Rashida's nowhere around. But she'll be the same person that'll call Jasmine a whore and say that she always starting stuff when it was your husband and that penis he called Adam's apple. Girl, okay. So he wants to get Cannon's last name changed and they agree on a number for child support. Everything is good. Jasmine and her friend walk out. He runs in behind her. Hey, 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 hey uh, Jasmine, um, you know, I admitted that I lied on you. So 
you know, I need for you to admit that the text messages wasn't true because it's messing up my, my marriage. And she was like, well, I can't do that because it was true. Like, what do you want from me? And so he was like, oh, really? Okay, okay, okay. And he go walking off a of grinning. And it was like, so you wanted her to retract what she said because you all of a sudden had a stroke of conscience and decided to tell the truth. But like she said, you lied on me. I'm going to tell the truth about you. So make it make sense. Rashida, come get this man, please get this man and get a life. So the cast perform their songs. Sierra perform her diss track. Shekana, uh performs child. It was funny. It was funny child. But after Sierra performed her diss song, Shekana says on the microphone that Amy says she's fucking scrappy. And everybody in the crowd is like, oh, like that's fucked up. Like what type of shit you want? Here goes scrappy. Hey, 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 man. Say, 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 man, I'm going to drag these real life. I got information on all those. You know, he get the stuttering and grabbing the microphone and this, this, that, the third. He didn't got amped. He mad. And Bambi tried to calm him down and was like, relax. It's not that serious. Sierra and Chaotic wrote it as a joke. Because in Sierra's song, she mentions um, the fact that Scrappy and Amy is supposed to be fucking around or fucking whatever. So he immediately gets mad because he feel like Chaotic trying to be funny and trying to start stuff. So he goes over to Chaotic and was like, hey, let me, t let me holler at you or whatever. But... He walked up on that man and like pushed him in the chest. So security jump in or whatever. Of course, chaotic feeling some type of way because why are you coming over here yelling and then putting your hands on me? Like what the fuck is up with you? Scrappy immediately get the line of folks talking about he just like tapped him. It wasn't no push. Even Zane was like, no, I was standing right there. You pushed that man. Like, stop lying. Stop lying. Stop lying. So, Chaotic is pissed. I would be pissed too because, A, don't come talking to me like you crazy. And then, taking it as far as to put your hands on me. Like, what? Like, I know we going through some but we grown. Talk to me like you got some sense. Don't ever come putting your hands on me. Because we will never be able to be back cool again after some shit like that. Like, no, we not playing them type of games. I do think that um, Chaotic has a reason to feel some type of way. To be honest with you, him and Scrappy were boys. They were really close, like brothers, right? You know that him and Amy fucked around. Then you gonna go in behind me and start fucking with her too? Like, huh? This what we doing? Like, at least he came to you as a man and told you the shit that Bambi was doing that he didn't play into. Because he would have been dead wrong if he would have played into Bambi flirting with him. And he didn't do that. So he has every right to have, you know, some type of feelings about what Amy and Scrappy are doing, you know? So it's just like a hit dog will holler. You f me over with the YouTube stuff. Now you f me over by f with somebody that I used to, f you know, deal with. Like, everything is showing that Scrappy is not a good friend. You know, so it's just like, are you guilty? That's why you running up on him acting a fool? Because you know you wrong? Because I don't see where in this chaotic is honestly wrong for writing the lyric or whatever. Like it's given you are guilty and you trying to put everything off on him, which is wrong. Backstage, Jasmine and her friends confront Mandices about being down to the ball. Yandy standing right there and Rich is there with them. And so she was like, you don't know who I am? And Mandice was like, no like who, who are you like of course he knows who she is right but it's just like okay who the fuck are you and so she was like you don't you you know you see me down at you be down in my bar I work at the strip club or whatever and he was like 
okay, like, I probably got a drink from you, but that was it, like, there ain't never been no conversation, and she was like, oh, yeah, I'm not saying that we had a conversation or anything like that, I'm just saying I have served you before, and he was like, yeah, but just because you served me a drink don't mean I'm gonna remember you, like, he was getting her together real quick, because it's just like, what was the point of you coming over here saying, you don't know who I am, and this, this, that, and the third, like, you approaching me, like, you about to say, me and you got something going on, when really, in all actuality, all you did was serve me a drink once. Like, what? And I didn't like that. Like, Jasmine, I had been riding with her this whole season into this Mandisi situation. Because even if what you're saying, what you and this Erica girl are saying is true about him, it ain't got shit to do with you. And the way that you even initiated the conversation was all wrong. All wrong. So Mandisa's is like, okay, end of scene. Me and my wife are about to go. It's a it's a good night. So the girl Erica was like, but I wasn't done talking. And Mandisu yells, you're done. <laughs> like end of scene. They waiting or whatever, I guess on their car or whatever to pull up. But the producers is like, can't we just have a conversation? And Mandisa was like, no, we had the conversation. I don't know her. So then the girl Erica was like, so you just going to let your husband fuck somebody else? And it's like, w wait a minute now. Like, how you coming there, Yandy, with an attitude about her husband? Make it make sense. Like, what? <laughs> like, was it a chunk of this conversation that we missed? So Mandisa was like, why are you talking? And she was like, first of all, you be fucking everybody in Atlanta and everybody knows it. So Yandy literally walked, stepped down and got in that girl face. Like they was literally right here to each other. And Yandy says to her, you're not going to talk to him like that. And the girl Erica was like, but I am. And what you going to do? So then hands get to flying. Security jumps in. Man, DC's about to pop one of these in the eye behind Yandy. He pissed. And... Jasmine and her little friends walk off mad or whatever. And apparently one of their friends is having an affair with Mandisi's, but is too afraid to step up and say anything. So it's like, okay, if she too afraid to step up and say anything, then why the f*** are y'all? Mind y'all business. Okay. Cause y'all look stupid. All right. And the way that y'all handled the whole situation was like bird behavior. It really was like, do I think that Mandisi's is cheating on Yandy? Uh, he probably was doing a little something. I don't put nothing past nobody. What gave me the, the feeling that something might be going on is when he looked at the Erica girl and was like, why are you talking? Why are you talking? It was given a little guilty right there, but um, I think if she did find out he was cheating on her, she ain't going nowhere. I think they'll work it out. They were going through a hard time, not to say that that gives him a pass to do so, but um, something might have happened. I don't know. Don't know these people to really say, but I don't put anything past them. So I guess we'll see if this narrative goes into the second half of the season. Uh, they've been posting about them being in love with each other and all of this type of stuff. So it seems like they're getting their marriage back on track from what I've been seeing. But yeah, Jasmine and her friends need to go somewhere and sit down because y'all look stupid, really stupid. And if I'm Yandy, I would be on the same type of time because I allowed y'all to address him, but then you want to keep going and then y'all want to be disrespectful. So yeah, I am going to check. It. And then when I get home, I check this. If I do feel like what y'all was saying was true, but like you're not about to talk to my husband on any type of way, ho. And I really feel like Yandy would have rocked her world. I really honestly do. But yeah, it was a good mid-season finale. I feel like Scrappy was in the wrong. Jasmine was in the wrong. Her and her friends for how they handled Yandy and Mandisi's. Um, Rashida and Kirk are garbage. Uh, Amy is a rat. 
I just have lost all respect for her team Sierra all the way with everything that went on this season. Uh, the Bam actually kind of redeemed herself for me this season. Spice, a best blueberry looking bitch. Shekana, messy but funny. Love chaotic. Zane and that lady can go on somewhere. Mm -mm, I ain't here for that. But overall, the first half of season 12 was really, really good really good i'm looking forward to the second half i will be doing a confessionals look uh review video so be on the lookout for that y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode let's talk about everything who do y'all think was in the right and in the wrong please make sure to thumbs up this video subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications so you know when my videos drop i love you i love you i love you and i'll see you guys on the next video